the question is Dina the Malchus Dina. It's an important topic. You know, there's laws of the land, what we have to keep. And uh, when does the Jewish law agree that we do Dina the Malchus Dina? When does this happen? This is a question. And it seems like a simple question, but it's so not posh it. We'll go through a little bit the halacha and some shalos of shuvas that are relevant, and maybe we'll get a little bit of an, uh, of an understanding. So, you okay? So, in Shul Samach Tes. Actually, the halachas about it. Halachas gazela, and that's halachas about the tax collector, mm-hmm. the infamous tax collector of the old days. And when you could do, when you could buy, so in middle of those halachas here, so it's like this. So, okay, we'll come back to this halacha, but we'll just go straight to the Ramah here. So you have, uh, so it's like this. So they, they used to have a guy that would go around for the king. He would buy the, uh, he would buy the rights to collect the king's taxes for whatever sum, and then he would collect it. And, um, and it was considered legal, because the king is allowed to levy taxes. As we see in Canada, we pay taxes, and this is according to the halacha. So it says like this. Um, but if the tax is an unfair tax, here, there's a machaber, kol din If he makes a rule for everybody, everybody has to pay the same amount. There's no... Uh, exceptions. Exceptions. Like you pay and you don't have to pay. For one person ain't a gezel, that's not gezel, and you're allowed to collect it for the king. You're allowed to buy it and collect for the king. If he focuses on a specific person, so that's Shaloi Kadas, that's stealing, the king's not allowed to steal. Just like everybody's not allowed to steal, the king's not allowed to steal either. So if it's a, a, a rule made for a specific, you see, they used to have a shiloh, they, they had special Jew tax. A Jew had to pay a tax if he wanted to live in the country. So that wasn't considered kadin, because why are they focusing on the din? It's not logi- on the Jews, it's not logical. If they say every, this kind of soicha, you know, has to pay a tax, this kind of businessman has to pay a certain taxes, different kind doesn't, okay. So maybe there's a reason why they decided to tax this specific trade but to tax a specific person, that's that's not fair. So that wouldn't be a legal tax that would go under the guidelines of Dina Machus Adina. But if they make a tax which is uh, for everybody, okay, give out the, so that, 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 that's, that they, they have a right to collect. Okay. So Ramos says, no. Even if you chokak l'bal umnas achas, can chokak l'mal v'beribis, so you do the case. If you if you loan beribis that you have to pay tax, yeah, if you if you loan with interest you have to pay tax. Some say you know that also you don't say did because it's also not fair. Dimarik, okay, another clause. And then it says like this: only taxes and things things that are totally in the ground. In other words, because the king has ownership in the land, so he could enforce laws that are totally bakarka. So he taxes, he gives you a land tax. In the land? or On land? the land, uh, you know. Coin, no, I was just uh, wondering if you meant crops. Taxes for the houses, what? I was just wondering if you meant crops oh, that, crops hadn't, also that maybe, hadn't been yeah, harvested. Yeah, like yeah, in yeah the that also, that's totally bakarka. Ki a melech goizer shalei yudayu ba'atze, because the melech makes a rule that you shouldn't live in his house. Only if you accept these conditions. Okay, so this is one sheet. The one sheet is you only say Dina Machus Adina when it's relevant to land issues. But anything else, you can't make a, uh, a law that you have to keep. 
There's what? In wartime, a military tax? So that's a good question if that's included in this. Um, it could be not. It could be a head tax. Maybe it would be because uh, he's allowing you to live here, so you could give a tax on that. But I think he's allowing you to live in his land so he could give a tax. Well, we'll come back to this. But the Shaimim, <coughs> and others argue with Svilahu and they hold the Aminim Bechol Davadin Machusidina. And everything you say, Dinim Machusidina. Okay, and everything you say, Dinim Machusidina. You know, he gives an example. How Malvala Mashkin, someone lends on a Mashkin, Yachal Amoichari Achar Shani, he could sell it after a year. Hoyl Bechain Dinim Machusa. So they used to have a law that if you lend on a mashkin, if you take a collateral, so if the guy doesn't come to collect it in a year, you could sell the mashkin and take your money. That was the law of the land. And the uh, Ramah Paskins, that uh, you could do that, because Dina Machus Adina. And he says, So he's says pretty clearly that uh, the Dina Machus Adina is uh, is uh, is, is uh, we have machlokes here. The first sheet just says it's only totally in things which are totally in the land, and the uh, other sheet that says the yeshchokim holds that it's anything. Any it says bechol davar. It's very unclear what that means. Bechol davar. We'll come back to it. But anything you could put a uh, you could make a. Um, uh, the, the, the king has a right to make rules. And that sheet really comes from... That sheet really comes from uh, the, the Rishonim that hold that anything which is a tikkun, which is considered uh, a takonis, a takonis for the... Anything which is considered a takonis for the people, you'll be able to do the machusa. Yeah. So, so basically. This is what comes out. There's Be'ikah two shittas in, in Din Machel Sedina. There are more, but it's Be'ikah two shittas. One shittah holds, it's only land-based. So if it's only land-based, so then most things, he can't tell us what to do. The king can't tell us uh, if you go through a red light, uh, you, you have to pay uh, $180 taxes <laughs> or whatever, you have to pay a fine. Uh, he can't tell you what to do. And, uh, okay, if you want to live on my land, so you have to pay a tax to, to use my land. But beyond that, Perhaps he's not uh, he's not uh, obligated to uh, to um, that would be in theory only. Why? We'll try not to pay your tickets. You oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You end up in jail. Yeah, you end up in jail. Because the question is, what mm -hmm. I could get out of it. Let's say I could get out of it. We'll see. We'll see different halacha. So let's say you know that's not so right. That's not so relevant. Uh, uh. Okay, so there are different halachas which are relevant, for example. Let's say, okay, you have, uh, we'll go to extreme cases. Let's say you have Yerusha Sabas, right? We know the, uh, the daughter in Jewish law doesn't, doesn't yashin. The daughter doesn't yashin. The, 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 the Yerusha only goes to males, okay? The Yerusha only goes to males and uh, doesn't go to the daughter. Now, the Takonis Chacham, a certain amount which has to be set aside for the daughter, Isa Nechassim, Unmarried daughters, they get tenth of the nechassim. The different halachas and hulchas nachlas. The married ones, they get the yerusha from the husband's side. You know, <laughs> the, the unmarried ones get uh, get the paid that they could get themselves married. They get a yerusha nechassim. 
So, okay, there's a way to make halachic will. You could do things to, uh, to, 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 what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. There's different uh, guidelines what a person's allowed to do, be Yerusha. But if a person doesn't, what's a person doesn't? And, and so someone passes away and he loses over children. And now, uh, they, the daughter wants to go and take her, take her chalik according to the non Jewish law. So she claims Dina de Malchusadina. So that's Pashat, that there's no, there's no such uh, leeway for such a thing. There's no such leeway. Now, there is a Rav Moshe that says that there's a, uh, there's a Rav Moshe that says that even today, since the, 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 the Dinu Malchusa is that the daughter does get Yerusha, so it could be it's like an Umdana that he's mocking it to her, and maybe there's some halachic way that we assume that the father was mocking it to the daughter, Somebody in the chassan. Okay, this is a child for a case where someone actually passes away, and there's a question: Is did the father actually um, really uh, the father actually give over to the to the daughter? But technically speaking, most places go no. The din machusadina doesn't apply. Doesn't apply over here. Uh, you're going to go ahead, and because the din machusadina make a uh, Go connect the halachas? Are you talking such a thing? You would never do such a thing. And actually, there's a stiva here in the shach. Because over here, the Ramah says, V'chein ikka, we paskin that you say din machus adina for everything. Okay, we say din machus for everything, and the, 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 the shach doesn't say much about it. But if you look in Simon Ayin Gimel, there's a long shach here, so got Mama test. Mama on this halacha, that if someone makes a loan and he takes a collateral, is he allowed to sell it after the year? And he's, uh, he brings the Ramah here, it's the same Ramah. And the shach is marach on it, a whole, whole two pages here. And in the middle he says like this, According to the Ramah, That he can't sell it after a year, that... that uh, that before a year you can't sell. Actually, you can't sell before a year, and after a year you could sell. But he says, to David to more mind. Given up, he didn't tire, you could sell it after 30 days. That's the din tire. Heich Nilman, Medina Akam, Levatel, didn't tire, Chas Vashalom. Loi to Heik Hazois be Israel. Let me boy, Loisim, a Paiskim, Shasayim, Gulayim, Mina, Didim, Achusa, Rak, but Varm, Shem, La Nois, Amelech. For sure, according to the Shittis that hold, only something which is La Nois, Amelech. Okay, so the Shulti Gibram says like this, what's the guidelines of Dina Machusa? Something which she's goes for his own benefit. The king has to gain out of it. The taxes, something which is a relevant halacha between man and his friend, so that's the Shulti Gibram. So Shulti Gibram says, okay, so you have halachas which are relevant, business, and all kinds of halachas. So no, the only time Dina Machus works is only if the king is actually gaining something from it. So he's getting taxes. Okay, taxes you have to give. But anything else, you don't say it. Then he says, I'll feel a sharp price, Kim, that hold. No, you do say Dinah Machus Adina on everything. Bechol Davar, not so fast. Hainu Davka Masha Eina Nega Din Tarisenu. That's only what doesn't go directly against the Torah. Ella Sheinu Mafurish Atzleinu. It's not so clear. But to do something which is straight a straight Nega the Torah law, Vade Lo Yase Kain Be Yisrael. So something which is not so clear. In the Jewish law, doesn't directly discuss it, so that you could say dinu machus adinon. But something where there's a where there's a direct law, a Jewish law that says not like that, then you can't say dinu machus adina. And he brings a raya from Yerusha. He brings a Rashban Shuva that someone married a woman in a place where they donned dinu akum that the Baal is not Yerush Hashishtai. The, the non-Jewish law at that time was that the husband does not yashin the wife. So, 
says, you don't say Dina Malchus to Dina. The Jewish law is the husband yashin is the wife. The kind of character called Dina Toy Ashlema. Ayn Shem Shaharach. Says, even though so, even though Lashon Arash is, even though we say Dina Malchus in Bechol Advarim, that's only linen. Anunis, and Menhagim shall Mishpate HaMalachim, he adds on. So now, what does this mean? So, we have two sheets here. The first sheet is only something which the king gains from. Only thing, one sheet is the only thing which is relevant to land. But, but tweaking it here, according to the, the Shulten Gibor, which means something which the king has enough from, you do Dina Machusa. The second sheet is... It's expanded, Bechol Dover. But the Shach is saying, Bechol Dover just means anything which is relevant to the Chukei HaMalchus. In other words, to the smooth running of the kingdom. So you could argue that running a red light is the smooth running of the kingdom. So people shouldn't crash. Or other business, there could be business uh, ideas, ventures, we'll see in some cipher in a minute, a different case. So certain takonis and rules they make, about you have to keep. That's Dina Malchus Adina. But if you have a specific halacha that's, uh, that goes connected with what the Torah says, that, that's their, that's their Jew laws, but that's not our laws. You're going to start damning Berkois, you're going to start going to a non-Jewish court to paskin our dinam. No, just like you can't go to a non-Jewish court to paskin our dinam, we can't paskin like their halachas in our Jewish court either. <laughs> Only something which they made for a takana, for the smooth running of the country, so that you're allowed to do dinam achus adina. But something which is not included in that it doesn't doesn't go. So Yarshi and wife's got nothing to do with running the country. So that's a very good question. So the, I'm trying to find. I saw last night. For some reason, I'm finding the truva now. And the other thing is, it, it, was it on, it was a law not to? Like if it just it sounds like the custom was not to, versus a law that prohibits it, which you say we don't hold by that. Two, you know what I mean? The what? The what? Like if it was a custom not to, so they don't do it, we do it. But it, was it an actual prohibition in their law and that you can't, that we would want? Like, you can't what? Your, your and your wife. Like if it's... That's what no, I'm their saying. laws of Yerusha goes one way. We have different laws of Yerusha. I know. But I'm saying if it was a prohibition that you can't, your and your wife... We have a conflict, right? But if it's just their custom... It's not a prohibition. They, 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 they just they didn't believe in so such a thing. Right, so then... No, it's still connected it out to her. Out to her believes in it. Right, but yeah. I'm saying on their side, if it's just they, cus- they just didn't do it, so we don't have a conflict. Because oh, it's not we, a conflict. We could do it. If it's a prohibition under law, uh, then we have a problem. Well, you're stealing, according to them. According to them, you're stealing. You're stealing money that rightfully belongs to the, the, the woman's uh, children or whoever. According to their law, you're actually uh, stealing, Right. With any law that they have, if you're not going to keep it, they can force you to keep it. Okay, so yes. what's the point of us saying, oh no, that, that we don't have to count in this agreement. It's up to them what they count, not up to us. Well, they count as a law. They, if they have a law... So you have a Moshe here with a tshuva, he says like this, he says that... Um, says that um, he the Moshe makes a rule that it depends if um, if it's he, 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 it's a little not so clear what he says he makes a rule that depends if it's um, something which they do for Tikkun Medina like the like the Shach is saying and he says Yerusha between a husband and a wife it's nobody's business it's a private it's a private affair in your family that's what he says the, Yerusha is a private affair in your family but something which is um, which is uh, uh, which is um, public. public, yeah, something which you have to do one rule for everybody, so uh, so the law would be simpler and clearer. 
when it comes to business, so that you could say, Dina Machus Adina. But again, that's very complicated because maybe they made a rule of Yerusha also that it should be simplified and codified. So it's very hard to understand what Moshe means. I like to read it in Russian for some reason. I can't find it now. Canadian law is simple. Uh, the, the husband uh, dies, the wife, uh, unless otherwise, gets it. Government gets it, unless you say otherwise. The wife gets it. Canadian law works out. You don't have a will, the government gets will. it. Canadian law I works think out you're precedent. Wrong. So you, so you have to have like these cases which are are shared. So you know how to um, and darshan a, their law. And a dash from one case from the next. Right. In other words, they take from right. In other words, they take from cases that happened earlier, right. and then and they extrapolate from that. So that's mamish dining bedine yakum. That's what Abush is saying. Something like that. You're using dine yakum. We don't use dine yakum. We use our own halachas. But something with the takana, you know, they used to make takanas, so see the some cipher of a certain khatana. They used to make takanas, so then you have to uh, you have to listen to them. So uh, we'll do a few cases over here which are interesting. What? It's not so simple. I think there's legislation that deals with what is required and then there's case law that goes around the legislation. Right, around the legislation. Right, so right, right. Don't forget the legislation. Right. So I'm going to give you an example of this. There's actually an interesting Shiloh which I found. The interesting Shiloh which is both in the Minchas Yitzchak and in Rab Moshe. The same um, the same Rav sent the Shiloh to both of them. The Shraga Ruben Halberstam. So he sent the Shiloh both to Minchas uh, Yitzchak and to Rav Moshe, and they have different psukim on the Shiloh. The Shiloh was like this, just to give an idea of the Dina Machus Adina. The Shiloh was that Ruben rented his house to Shimon, okay? Ruben rented his house to Shimon, rented an apartment. He had an apartment for rent, he rented an apartment, a large apartment. <coughs> Shimon in New York. And they made a, uh, a star that, you know, the rental agreement is renting it for two years and uh, for a certain amount per month. And he's already living there for, I don't know, yeah, 10 years already. He's living there for a long time. And he didn't charge him much. He, you know, he went up a little bit, but uh, according to the amount, to the going rate, uh, you could get a lot more. The only thing is that there's laws how much you like to hike up each year. And he didn't do it. He didn't hike it up. So right now he's not getting a lot. Then what happened was that Ruvain's family started getting larger and one of his children were even sick and the doctor says he has to move out of his small apartment and move into a larger apartment. So he says, great, I'm moving to my apartment that I'm renting to Shimon. Tell him it's time to leave, I'm going to take it over. <coughs> so Shimon says, I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving, it sounds familiar. I'm not leaving because, uh, two, first of all, the rent is nice and cheap here. A. Eh? And uh, <coughs> according to the laws of the land, that's what he claimed, according to the laws of the land, you can't throw me out. That was the Shiloh. Now, so, but why in Jewish law could he? Because he had a star for two years. Unless it was special. In Jewish law, it's my house. I could do whatever I want with it. I could tell you to leave. I, you, you can't rent against my will. In Jewish law, there's no rule that you can't throw a tenant out. I got throw a tenant out if uh, the star is over, the two year star is over. Well, I thought it was the middle of the two years. No, no, it was after the two years. It was He's after been the there two for years. ten He's years. He's been there for ten years almost. Oh, and they start, so they don't have an agreement. So, yeah, they, it's just, you know, they, they, they continue inventing. They expired yeah. and they just kept yeah. doing it. Yeah, So now he wants to throw them oh, out. Okay. So the, the law over here, more or less, is in, in, in Canada, is that if you want to use it yourself, you can move in. Uh, they've changed that. They've changed uh, that too. Just recently. You can't move in. Uh, you yeah. have to stay there for a year. And you have to pay a month's rent. I don't, you have to give a month's rent. It's but technically, you can get them out. And yeah. I know because the people wanted, when the housing went up, yeah. and the curls renting houses, and they wanted to throw us out, but they really didn't want to throw <coughs> us out. They wanted to rent it to someone else for a higher price. You know, so, but they say, no, we're going to move in. You know? That's what they did. But in any case, there's such a law. But here it seems that the law was, according to the, the shayel, according to the question, the law was that, uh, no, you can't throw a tenant out, according to the deen of the Malchusa, and the Jewish law is that I could. So that was a shayel. What do you do? Who's right? The masker or the seicher? Who's right over here? Okay? So the shayel, 
it's a big time chacha. It's a and he wrote a long tshuva to to the Minchas Yitzchak on this shaila. Whether we say basically he wrote a long tshuva, whether we say din and machus adina, do we pass in din and machus adina? What is connected the halacha of the Torah? So he says this is what he claims out halacha that roiv poiskim hold that we say did like the Ramah says roiv poiskim say you do say din and machus adina. Um, not just for uh, whether he gets tax you, or not just if the king gets a benefit, the king doesn't get a benefit of this. This is Chukei Amadina. This is something which is, uh, you know, for the... So according to Roy Price, when you do say it, it's like a Takana. And especially in this case, it's a Takana Gadoyla. Otherwise, people are going to be thrown out in the streets. So the, law, the law of the land is, if you rent a place, you can't throw the guy out. So there shouldn't be, uh, you know, roaming the streets without a place to live. So it's a takana for the good of the country, whether they made a good takana or not one, but that their kavana was for the good of this country. So therefore, l'chayra, al-zdin and machus adina, the soich is correct, you cannot remove him. Now, the, uh, the, the question is, the Ben Chassir says, well, first of all, I don't understand. Roif Paiskim, the whole idea. We just read the Shach. The Shach argues on Ramah. And the Shach says, you don't say Din al Machus Adina if it's connected the Halach of the Torah. And since this is clearly connected the Halach of the Torah, according to the Shach, you wouldn't say Din al Machus Adina. One could also, <coughs> could also argue in this case that it uh, depends whose perspective, whether it's good for the. So he deals with that. Do you, do you say, well, we could say that this takana is not good? For but landlords, it's uh, It's not good. good. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. It's not good. It's not good. But he says, at the end of the day, we can't get involved in that. If the, if the, the, the country made a law, which they feel, you know, the, uh, the senators, whoever's up there feels that this is a, 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 a good for the country, so then uh, that's what they decided. I mean, that, that's, they made it. We can't say, well, we don't think this law is a good law. That you can't do. So at the end of the day... He goes into that a little bit, but at the end of the day, uh, there the, uh, will be din machus adin. The only thing he can say is the shach is not like that. But he says the ma'isa hagam the shach says not like that. But he says no, most places can talk a hold not like the shach and hold. You do say din machus adina, and um, but it could be it's a little bit of a suffix. And I have a right in the dina mominus. This is one of the complications when you get into dina toya is that if you have a few shittas, even if most of the opinions hold one way, but if there is a, a, a valid opinion that holds differently, I could say I hold like that opinion. So let's say a guy wants, uh, let's say for some reason, some business deal, I owe a guy $100,000. But there is a valid opinion in Shulchan where I don't owe it to him. Maybe most opinions I do hold it to him. So now if you're talking about a shaila of, uh, you know, a psak, so you go after Raiv, uh, most of the paiskim. But when he's talking about the Chosh and Mishpat, where you need, want to collect money from me, and I'm a muhzik, I'm holding on to the money, I could say, Kimli, I hold like that shita, that hold like this. So uh, the question is, could I say, I hold like the shach, that you don't say, Din Machus Adina, Keneged, but then Mephurish in the Torah. So now the question is, who's the muhzik? The maskir, who owns the, 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 who owns the, uh, the, the apartment, what a soich who's living in the apartment. So, so that's a big machlaikas. Who's considered the muhsik? Is that muhsik? Who's in other words, if let's say I'm collecting money from you, yeah. it was the word mean muhsik. The one, the one who's holding on to it. Oh, but he has so a it's 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 a long term. The owner only has a lot that he owns it. This yeah. guy has a lot that he lives there. Right. So he's a stronger. So that's the shaila. Than the owner. So that's the big machlokes. Who's the mochzik? So in other words, if I'm collecting money from you, you're holding on to the money. You're a mochzik. But here, it's not a question of collecting money. It says if the question would be, could I charge you more money because the rent went up? And the dinah machus adin is you can only go up whatever or two percent. And, 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 and I want to charge you 10% more under Jewish laws I could charge you more so you could say uh, I'm a mochzik you know he's a mochzik but here the question is who owns the land I want to live in my land but you're living there so do we say you're considered a mochzik so he gets into that um, that perhaps the, the, the mosque is a mochzik
That's a shayla. So he comes out that really the soich is the mochse, like you're saying, and really I can't throw him out. And if you go with dinim machus adina, which should be the ikra alocha, you cannot throw out this renter. But he says something interesting, which is which is uh, very often the truth. He says what you were saying. He's saying that lemaisa. This is not something which is a straight, clear, uh, you know, straightforward, clear case. Cut in, because uh, you go to court, and court's going to judge it. This guy has a family. He has a sick child. He needs the space. He's, he can't live in his apartment anymore. And he needs a place to live. So perhaps the laws don't apply that he's not allowed to kick the guy out. In a normal case, you can't kick the guy out because they don't want people throwing people in the street. But you have a valid taina here. If you have a valid taina and you go to court, the, the judge is going to decide whether this person can say you can throw him out. So even though there's a, there's a you know a base law, but like you're saying, there are cases which are different. There are exceptions, and and this may fit into the exception. But that's the rule if you want to move in. You don't need to go to the judge. That's yeah. the rule. If it's for your family, I'm you saying, can go yeah, and yeah, get yeah. in. I, I, I'm not talking about the it's law of Canada today. I'm talking about I'm talking about, I'm talking about what the law was in New York back in that time, in the 1950s or whatever it was, 1957. 1957. It seems that the law was that uh, you can't evict a person. So, rent but, control. What? It was rent control. Rent control. Yeah. So 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 you can't evict them. That was the law at the time, and uh, and but he says since it was something which could be. So they, they, even the, the they they be murder that in this case you could throw him out and it's going to go to court. Avadi, you're not allowed to go to court. You can't go to court to judge this. But once it's already uh, once it's already a suffolk, uh, how, how dina machus dina works. So now you have another shaila, a suffolk dina the machus dina. <laughs> if you have a suffolk dina the machus dina, so dina machus dina is considered a takana. So since it's considered a takana, the Ketzai says that a suffolk takana, you go back to the Ikar Halacha. In other words, the takana falls off. So a suffolk din and machus adina, the din machus adina falls off and you go back to the Ikar din atayra, and then the mask wins. A. B. Even if you don't want to claim that, you want to say it's still a suffolk of his din machus adina, but he says at the end of the day, we're not going against the din machus adina. Since if you would go to court, it's possible that you would win, this case, it's possible you would win. So the Minchas Yitzchak says it's mistaver that the uh, we have three we have three reasons to give it to the master, to the one who's renting, to to, rent, to the uh, owner. owner. One reason is perhaps he's considered the mosik because he owns it, and he could say, "I hold like the shach." A B, perhaps it's a suffik din in machus here. And it falls off, and Allah would go to him. And three, even if it doesn't fall off, at the end of the day, we're not going against the din of the Machus Adina here. We're not going against the law of the land, because the law of the land is a little bit murky in this specific case. And therefore, Bezin has a right to go after the Jewish law, and that would be to give it to the Mosque. You make them both Mosque, you won't have to argue. He's a Mosque that he owns it, so we'll leave it. Right, he owns it. He's a Mosque that he's living so here. So do you do? So we leave it. So both moksas are good. You leave it status quo. They both live there. No, his <laughs> moksa is that he owns it. That's not changing. No, but right? he wants to move in. That's irrelevant. His the thought is irrelevant. His past is that he owns it. That's I'm what not the question's that. about. That's the question. Okay, okay, we're not changing his status. Okay, okay, okay. but that, some hold the mosque is the moksa, so you could throw the guy out. Is the moksa can owning it? Should the moksa can own the land? He asked two people. Right? He asked. Oh, so that, that's the minchas yitzchak. That's how he came. There's a third situation that comes up a few times. You've got the owner, you've got the renter. I'm stopping to pay my mortgage payments. Now the mortgage company comes in and they yeah. have totally different powers. Okay, this is one shot over here. But Moshe comes along and he says an amazing thing over here. But Moshe says, and this is a very sadistic Ashaila for Dini Machus Adina and for Bezin, it's very, very relevant. But Moshe says, this is what he writes. Mashaherech, Kvay Tarasa, Yarama, Be'inya, Dina, Machusa, the Shoyal, Cheskashag, Lumen, Abishtam. He says, what you, he was Mayrach in the Halachas of Dina, he says, it's difficult to write in this area for two reasons. One, because there's such a tremendous Mavucha between the different Poiskim and Stiris, with Sorokhaz, Ian, Uzman, Rav. You need a lot of time to look into these Halachas. 
Maybe Hashem will give me the time to look into it. With a tiny era kamoni, like a small person like me, that's where Moshe writes. So I, it's hard to write. It's hard to write. <laughs> Two, he says, I don't want it to just be seen, even from my chew that I'm going to write, that I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm belittling the covered of the malucha of this land that we're living in. We have to give our chorus to the land we live in. So I don't want to write something which may seem contradictory to the, to the law of the land. But, so he says, I'm not going to write you about this, Allah. But, in your specific case, it's irrelevant. That's what he writes. Why is it irrelevant? The law of the land says that the, the, the guy, you can't throw out the renter. And the Torah's law says you could throw him out. But he's saying it's irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant? He says, he says like this. If they would have, the, the, the guy would have rented the apartment before the law came into effect. And then, the not the the, the dinim achus came in and they made a law that you can't throw out a renter. So then that would be a question of dinim achus adina. You rented it and now the law says you can't throw them out. Are you allowed to throw them out or not? Do you go after the law of the land or do you go after the Torah law? But here you rented it after the law was in effect. So whenever two business partner parties make a deal in a land where there's a law of the land. He says, so that's done, al das, the law of the land. Because you know, you could go to court, you could this, this is going to happen. So he says, if you were <coughs> and you didn't make a Tanai Mephorish, that you could throw him out afterwards, as Habi Kehistu, as if you specified, that you rented it according to the din of the land. I wrote a two-year uh, rental agreement. So the two years was just that uh, the, the, the renter, which is not really true today, but the renter can't leave. And if he leaves, he has to pay uh, a class or whatever. But it doesn't mean that the other guy can throw it out because that's the law of the land. So in other words, the Moshe is saying, I'm already a thing here. That any time where there is a law in effect and you do business, uh, it's, it's a stam das is that it's according to that law. Unless... You specify in your star that you're doing it differently. We call it implied term. Implied, it's implied yeah. term. It's an implied, implied term. Term. Right. That's correct. That's what Moshe says. We're only dealing with residential. That is Baruch Hu. That is Baruch Commercial is different. Implied term is a commercial too, but it's hard to argue them because you're sophisticated parties, right? You've got to get a subordination agreement on a uh, commercial lease to mortgage. So in this case, you're saying now there's like three. There's a suffolk. There's it's you not know, so clear. If it was a case that was absolutely clear cut, can right. get? Would he? You think would Ramosh say the same thing? Ramosh for sure is saying. You're saying that if even if even if it's com, com, clear cut. Okay. Uh, Ramosh is assuming that it's a clear cut halacha okay. and he's saying you have to go according to the law of the land if it's not clear cut if it's not clear cut the question would be would Ramosh agree in other words now what do you do if it's clear cut so they agreed when they made a star uh, they agreed to go according to the law of the land but let's say what he's claiming that it's not so clear cut and they, 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 they have a case to go to court and the judge is going to decide so I saw from Dov Feinstein that he says that uh, Avada, uh, Moshe agrees that even though many times even write in the documents, you write, there's a halach question, I let us sign a document that says that the parties agree to go to, uh, to, 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 you know, to court in the case of a disagreement. Uh, you know, at the bottom of the document, you write that. I let us sign that. I'm agreeing to go to the non-Jewish court. I'm allowed to sign it. So he says, Avada, you let us sign it because you're just agreeing to keep the law. That's what you're agreeing. Not, not to break the law. But Avada, if you do come to a dispute, you have to go to a Jewish law. <laughs> you have to go to a Jewish court. And the Jewish court is going to have to take into account whatever Heskin was made based on the laws of the country. But Avada, you can't don with Bedina Yerkois. You have to go to a Jewish court. Also, you could sign it in case your other party doesn't want to go to a Jewish court. You're, you're allowed to go. Then you're allowed to go. In certain cases, I go. But the, uh, uh, what he writes is that even Rabbi Moshe would agree about uh, that if there's a case which has to be judged, then of course then you're going to go to a Jewish court and they're going to judge 
then they could already take into account uh, the, the, the Jewish halacha. You know, once it's already murky, it's not so clear. It's not so clear. But what Moshe is writing is that if the law was in effect before the deal took place, then it's partial that that's already in Metakana Samadina that the Mechayiv to go with that. So, so Rabbi Moshe is saying he's part of the star that's an implied term that you're going to hold by, by the laws of the land. Is, is that, is right. It, it's part of the star. It's part it's of the star. the star. It's part of the star, and therefore... <clears throat> that's why it's irrelevant. That's why you think it's irrelevant. That's why it's irrelevant. It was it's a right. two-year term. The, the term is over. Right, but he's say, but but Ramosh is saying it's an implied term that when you did you guys sat down to deal with the back of both your minds that that the law of the land applied, and you couldn't kick the guy out even though you didn't write it down. Right. Ah, you're right. That's right. That's correct. Yeah, but but he, where it gets messy, if, if one of the guys says, "Yeah, it wasn't in my mind. It might have been in your mind, but it wasn't in my mind." So how do you? That's an implied. It's what's reasonable, you know. Right, so Ramosh has another tshuva, which I'm trying to, I can't find it now. He has another tshuva, which is very relevant. Let's say a guy goes Clearest bankrupt. Mind. Let's say a guy goes bankrupt. So which one? Chapter 11. <laughs> no, which one? The U.S. Yeah, that's the U.S., yeah. So, no, I'm, the question no, I'm serious. Was, which one? The tenant or the landlord? No, 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 no. A new, new story. Oh, new story, okay. New story. A guy... <laughs> In this story, a guy goes bankrupt, right? And the question is, uh, the question that he had was, uh, there's been questions here, but the question is, am I, do I owe money? I borrowed money, and I went bankrupt, and now do I owe the money? According to the law of the land, uh, I'm, I'm potter. You know, they can't come after me. According to Jewish law, perhaps not. This could be considered Takana Samadina. Do we consider this a Takana Samadina? Because, um, because uh, you know, otherwise people wouldn't be able to do business, they wouldn't be able to trust, they wouldn't be able to do. What do we say? No, uh, this is a personal thing. The question is, where Moshe writes that not everything is considered a Takana Samadina. Certain things are personal, like we said. Yerusha, Yerusha Sabao is personal. It's personal between me and you. So we can't, you don't say Medina Machus on that. And certain things are considered a takar of the cloud. So the question is, he says, it's very unclear to know when it's considered one and when it's considered the other. I have to find it. It's right now. I can't find it. Now, there's a, another interesting case. See how far this goes to Hassam Seifer. It's a Hassam Seifer over here that uh, talks about also what the guidelines of Dibba Mahus is. And the case was over there, there was a, uh, exactly how it worked, but there was a, uh, a uh, there were different Seichrim that were like middlemen, and they, uh, they would stand on the road going into the city, and they would convince the Seichrim that come in, and they would help them buy, you know, they would help them buy the wine. So I was telling them to buy the wine. So there were different uh, seichem that would go out and, and, and sort of try to do this. And, and they would get a commission from it, you know, they would get a commission. So there was one guy that was doing it, another guy went to competition and took away his business, more or less. And then they went into partnership, all story here. At the end of the day, the government came in and made a rule. How many sursurim, uh, how many people are allowed to have doing this uh, in, in, per city? And that they have to split it equally, communism. You know, they have to split it equally. In other words, as let's say there's a certain amount of people come to the city to do business. So these middlemen, whoever makes more does less is irrelevant. They split the pot in the middle. You know, so that was a takana. And everybody gets a certain amount. So two of them went ahead and made the money, and they knocked the third one out. And the third one came to Besden saying, I want to get my third of this portion of the thing. But he was prohibited, as the numbers allowed. Yeah, he was allowed. He was allowed. Was he allowed the third one? Or yeah, not? yeah. He claims he was allowed. That was part of the shaila here. So he goes into the shaila of Dina Machus and Dina, and he brings the Ran that says you only do it if it's his land, and only something which he gained from. He says it will be enough gemina. Are you allowed to? This is a big shayla. Also, Allah, we're not going to get into it until time. 
but I but I'm allowed to be mafkia. In other words, let's say the the, 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 the king makes a tax. Am I allowed to get out of the taxes? That's a question. So he says it's totally this machlokes. Well, what's totally machlokes? If you hold that the king is allowed to make for the muse for the takon of the land, he's allowed to make rules. So part of the rules is there's a tax and you have to pay. And it could be din hefker, bezin hefker. It could be halacha of whatever the the the, 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 the what's behind this halacha of din machus But if they make such a rule, you have to keep the rule. Is this specific to a king, or would it be different? No. So who are they not a king? Who are they? Who are they? Even if it's a, like an elected government. Yeah, elected government. Also, they they have control of the land, and they can tell you what to do. The question would be if you have a Jewish government. If there's dinah machus adina. So if it's for takonis, that's what some soy wants to make a chilek. If it's something which is for the takonis of the oilam, so everybody's maskim to that. We all live in this country and we're a mosque. There has to be rules and regulations. So we sort of agree with it. There is such a thing besides the Inma Chusadina called a minig asoychrim. It's takonis, which everybody has to follow. In other words, this is the minig of all the peddlers or whatever. They used to have different rules. Union. The much has a true about a union. If, uh, if a union is la or not. If the, everybody gets together and they agree to a certain thing, so that's binding. That's takonis asoychrim that's actually binding la halacha. So din machus din is not worse than that. Even if you have, if it's not a, even if it's not a king, and it's not a, and it's a Jewish king which has no halacha of din machus din maybe, but there's there's halachas of the law of the land that everybody agrees to, that's binding. So he says this is an afkamina. If you go with that, that is uh, that they have a right to be masakin for the land, so then you have to pay your taxes. But if it's just a uh, uh, the king, since he owns the lands, he's allowed to charge you money. He's allowed to charge you for it. So he says, "Then uh, fine, I'm allowed to charge. He's allowed to charge you." But the question is, could I, if I could get out of it, if I could find a way to get out, I would be allowed to get out of it because as long as he doesn't chop my head off, I'm okay, you know. So, uh, so, I'm, so it's not gezel. In other words, if the tax collector. It's coming mitam hamelch. Even a Jewish tax collector is allowed to collect it because there's a halacha of dina machus adina. It's not stealing. The king's not stealing from me. He's allowed to take it. But it's loigarif mafkar salva, which are from a guy. If I owe a guy money, if I could get out of it, you know, there's certain halachas of mafkar salva. So therefore, uh, if that's the reason for dina machus adina, I would be allowed to get out of paying taxes as long as you're not caught. Yes. The involved in other things, but I'm talking strictly uh, the mamnas halacha. But if it's takana samadina, then you can, then you have to pay. You can't get out of it. So it makes him alochas. But anyways, he says over here that uh, he really paskins that you you don't say dina machus adina keneged adin tayra. You don't say it. But he says something which is a tikkun medina that's made for takanas of the medina. Uh, so he says, and, and uh, takonas money that we would make ourselves. He says in Jewish law we also make takonas. There are a lot of takonas that they made in Dine Mominus. So, uh, so it's not worse if they make the takonas, Dine Machus Adina, of something which they make, Zakta Chassam Seifer, which we would make also perhaps, something which is a smarter thing that we would make, has its binding. And therefore he says it's Pashit that this person has to pay, uh, gets his chaluk. In the, in the shares, if that was a takana, then he gets his chelik. Um, if that can be verified that he was in on it and he, he was he's rightfully part of the the, the 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 rule, that they would have to give him two third, uh, a third of everything that was made in the past, and going forward a third. But that that's his his insight here. So he says that. Um, Agents, the wine agents. Yeah, no, we're, 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 no, we're are we? Some cipher. Well, we're past. He actually brings a raya that we do such a thing because we find that the king made a takana that by David Amelach that they, when they went to war they split it evenly. According, not a, I looted, I get more, you get less. They split everything evenly, and even with the Bnei Amadina they had rules how to split the loot. So you see, there's halachas. There is some halachas of communism here, where everybody comes together and they split it equally. So we find such a takana. So they could also make such a takana. If there's a takana, which is something which is mustaban, something that we would do also, 
And, and that's what, my, that's what the Imam claims, that in this case of the renter also, it's something which we do too. We make takonis. We make takonis. So Chazal make takonis that you can't, uh, you can't rent for too high, of course. Uh, they make all kinds of laws too, which takonis we have to follow. So if the Medina makes it, and they make it for a reason which is a, a, a valid reason, then, uh, then we would have to follow it. I'll see the Machus Adina. So at the end of the day, uh, Rabbi Moshe writes, I wish I could find that out true, Rabbi Moshe writes that it's very unclear when we say, you do say it, and when you don't say it, and what the Allah Chassar, there's definitely machlokes involved, and sometimes I could claim, I hold like the sheet, you don't say din machus adina, so you wouldn't be able to collect the money from me. These Allah Chassar are very difficult to get to the bottom of, we have a steer in the shach here, whether you hold of it, but the general rule of thumb, as a general rule, is something which is, is made for Takana Samadina, for the for business, easy business relations. You see, it's not so simple, but I don't have time to get into that, but something which I made, let's say, uh, house buying, for example. House buying, according to the halacha, if I pay cash, I buy, I own the house. But according to the Chay Kamalchus, you have to, you have to, uh, you can't just give money and you own the house. You actually have to have the proper document and some countries that have to be signed in an official the ledger of the of the of the malchus that this house is handed over, it's taken out and over. So there's certain dina machus dina which changes the way of kinyonim, the way of buying. So again, so it's pashit that Ramosha writes that it's pashit that lechatchila when I'm buying it, I don't have das to, to to sell it or to own it only according to what works in the country. So even if you give me money and we make a deal that it's sold. Even though according to Jewish law, Kesef is kinda, but even Jewish law recognizes that I have to have full intention to sell it. So therefore, it's not considered that was same of Tas until it's done according to the, the, the non-Jewish law, and that's Pashat, that's what Rabbi Moshe writes. But the Chassam Sefer has, is not so clear on that. So there are questions, something which goes connected to Jewish law, the Jewish law says one way, and the non-Jewish law says another way, Halach Lamaisa, what happens? Who owns this piece of land? So these are uh, questions that Seems to that me that, that the distinction the Chesim Sulfur is talking about um, the law of the land, he's talking in a situation where you have essentially a dictatorship, where you have a king or, or it's not the type of government we have today and where Moshe is talking more no, so say for also they made a they made a rule that the circum split evenly. It's a takana, you know, they sat down and they made laws in order to regulate the economy. Right. So that that's 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 a valid. Right. So that's right. what we have today. That's what we have today also. So, right. so it right. seems to work out if we go by that sort of. Right, but even the Chassam Soifa holds that it doesn't always work if it's connected to Allah. In other words, a certain way of making kinyanim, but Chassam Soifa says might not work according to Jewish law. 